live in a place we call a habitat. So a habitat may be as small as drop of water or as big as town or city. It is composed of numerous species consisting a community. Community structure is not constant. They tend to change through time. And these numerous species that change through time refers to what we call biodiversity. So, Biodiversity is coined from the words biological diversity. Usually, scientists would refer to three levels of biodiversity, namely the species diversity which talks about the different kinds of organisms, the genetic diversity that talks about the informations that organisms contain, and the ecosystem diversity which are the different kinds of places where organisms live and the interconnection that binds these organisms together. So, after finishing all the didactics assigned to all of you, let us now dive in into our main goal and that is to discuss and for you to understand what do species diversity is. According to a book that I have read, so species diversity is the effective number of different species that are represented in a collection of individuals or data set. Meaning to say, the species diversity merely talks about the represented number of species that is or are currently present in a specific place or community. So a species is one of the basic units of biological classification at a taxonomic rank. A species can also define as a group of closely related organisms that shares common characteristics and qualities that are usually capable of interbreeding and producing fertile offspring. As per the need of a natural and a well-diverse ecosystem, species are said to be the key working part as they became the main source of medicine, clothing, fibers, industrial products, and many more. They are also important in maintaining the gaseous composition of the atmosphere. They are also responsible for the regulation of our global climate. They are also responsible for the generation and maintenance of soil. They are important to recycle our waste products. And they are the biological controller of other pest species. So ecosystem surely would not function if all species were lost. Although it is still unclear just how many species are necessary for an ecosystem to work properly. So if an ecosystem has poor species diversity, it may not function properly or efficiently. So a diverse species assemblage also contributes to ecosystem diversity. So it's very important for us to understand this species diversity because it will really help us a lot. And without this, it might be hard for other organisms to work together and to make um, everything on point and on set. From now on, let's take some of the necessary informations you will be needing when we talk about the species diversity. First on the list, we do have the species richness. So the species richness is the number of different species in an ecosystem. So environments that can support large number of the species, such as tropical areas, tend to have a greater species richness. So Philippines is one of the examples of this um, species richness. So our country have a lot of different species and it is said to be that our country is one of the well diverse um, biodiversity all around the world. So for the example of species richness, we do have this one. So if we have two plots of plants A and B, and plot A has 24 species of plants, and plant B has 84 species of plants, plot B has higher species richness, meaning to say the species richness, it is about the number that is currently residing or living in a specific region or place. Second, we do have the species evenness. So this is the variation in the abundance of individuals per species within a community. If a community has a large disparity between the number of individuals within its species, it has low evenness. If the number of individuals within a species is fairly constant throughout the community, meaning it has a high evenness. So for example,
If community A has 10 individuals divided between two species, but species number 1 represents 9 individuals, while species number 2 has only 1, then community A has low evenness and low species diversity. If community B has 10 individuals divided between two species, in which species number 1 having 4 individuals and species number 2 having 6, then meaning to say, our community number B, our community B has high evenness and higher species diversity. The more even the number of animals per species within a specific ecosystem, the greater the species diversity. Meaning to say, our species evenness is the highest when all species in a sample have the same abundance or meron silang same the number of species. Third, in our list, we do have the ecosystem efficiency. So a study from the University of Maryland suggests that by increasing species diversity in an ecosystem, both the efficiency and the productivity of an ecosystem will increase. The study increased the species richness such that the defeating success of individuals was enhanced. A greater species richness and diversity may cause our ecosystem to function more efficiently and productively by making more resources available for other species within the ecosystem. So what is ecosystem efficiency trying to imply to us? Meaning, the more the number of diverse species living in a certain place, they are more capable of surviving due to the external and internal help that they can get from all the other species that possesses this what we call give and take relationship. The fourth one would be the keystone species. So a keystone species is an organism that helps to maintain species diversity within an ecosystem by keeping the numbers of other species in an ecosystem constant. By not allowing one species or another to become overly dominant, a keystone species maintains species diversity and ecosystem integrity. From its definition, keystone species can be a regulator, can be a regulator of all the other species, they are the one who equalizes species, so that we can avoid this what we call domination of other species that might affect or cause other species currently living in peace. So a keystone species is an organism that helps us to define and enter ecosystem. Without this keystone species, our ecosystem would be dramatically different or cease to exist altogether. So mean to say they are the regulator, they are the equalizer, they prevent um, the domination of um, different species from other species. So for the example of our keystone species, an experiment conducted in 1969 by Robert Pin observed that if a predatory species of starfish was removed from an ecosystem, it allowed or it allows two different species of mussels to outcompete to other species in the ecosystem and can reduce the species diversity. Last on our list, we do have the invasive species. So an invasive species is a foreign species that is introduced to an ecosystem. So the Center for Invasive Species and Ecosystem Health states that these species grow and reproduce rapidly, causing major disturbances to the areas in which they are present. So these species outcompete the other species for food and habitat. Since the indigenous species can compete, they either are forced to leave the ecosystem or might die out. So if an invasive species forces out too many other species in a specific region or area, the species diversity will drop and it would cause an ecosystem to function inefficiently or fail. Meaning, if all the species try to be invasive to each other, it will be hard for some to survive. And if that case happens, 
um, the extinction will occur. So it's better for us to regulate our species richness in a specific area to prevent the necessary losses that would make a huge impact to the whole system and it would really affect all the organisms, not just we humans, but all the other plants, animals, and all the other microorganisms that is currently living in the earth. So these are the examples of invasive species. So we do have the Akan Acanthaster plankai and the Aegis aegyptis. So they are just some of the invasive species that is or that was recorded in the Philippines. But if you're really looking out for more, um, I put this a link so you can check this out and it will um, direct you to the list of species that is considered to be invasive. So from all the things this topic can give, we can now agree on the purpose of species diversity. That species diversity contributes to the health of ecosystem. So they are considered a thread that makes us all of us to be interconnected. And it makes its own purpose so that its importance of how do we humans and all other organisms can benefit. By looking on its purpose, it can relatively give us idea and a visualization of its importance and equality. So class, based from the information and details you've gathered, why do you think it is important to preserve and to equalize or even balance the diversity of species we have? So I will leave you that question because it's up to you how you will going to take it within yourself but i am really really looking forward that we should always take care of all of the species that we have because once it's become disturbed or there's became an invasive species it will be hard for us to control the normal system that we have and that would be all and thank you